All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody. It's time for Show and Tell. The most common thing you can do on the internet right now is hang out with us for the next half an hour. We chat with makers and creators and crafters from around the world. Yeah. Coming by, showing off what they're working on at home or at school, the yeah. maker space. The longest running show and tell. We do this every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Right. Um, let's, uh, let's kick it off with Kevin. Say hi to Kevin. Kevin, how are you doing out in Minnesota today? Hey. Did you keep? Hey, we're good in Minnesota. Is it snowing yet? You know, we did have a lot of snow. Oh, great. And now yesterday and today was 70. Oh. Okay. But on it's Halloween, obvious. we were trying to trick or treat with the, the little bit we could do. It was gale force winds and about 32 degrees. It was freezing. <laughs> so my son, we I was going to show you a project I did for his uh, project, but uh, he was Maverick from the original Top Gun. So we, I made him a Maverick jet, yeah. kind of, kind of like a transformer type thing, where he lays down, turns into an airplane. Yeah. And you know how jets are in wind; they don't like it. So I didn't survive the night. Yeah, I saw the video, and he transforms. It was really cool. Yep. He's a transformer jet. Yeah, it was, he wanted to be a transformer again, like he was last year. We had a, he was actually Optimus Prime, but we tried something different. So I used the Matrix portal and just put right in his chest. Use an old T-shirt to uh, to wrap it, but it's just okay. a countdown. Just said three, two, one, take off to the candy zone. Yeah, exactly. Cool. It was pretty fun because him and I were working on programming that the other night, and he put it right in his chest, and it was so bright. So we tried dimming the LEDs, and that worked too. But then the just putting like something over it as a diffuser. Yeah. I know in the Ada box, there's a black diffuser. Well, we just used uh, like an old white T-shirt and kind of wrapped it, and it worked really well. Sweet. Well, it's awesome to see, you know, like Halloween, It's it should be a time of candy, yes, but also creativity, right? It's the one yeah. time you can make and, and create seemed, anything. It seemed like this year there was a lot more creativity. I saw it all over Twitter. There was some really cool stuff. Like Sophie Wong's hat was really neat. Yeah. That was cool to see. She might be here. Yeah. She might show it off. I think a lot of folks had um, more time to think about all the Lego-like components that they could mix and match for yeah. costumes because yeah. um, they may have had a little bit more time at home this year. So I think they got to think about it more. Um, yeah, Halloween should be an entire entire month. Um, we're still getting through all the projects that people sent in to show us. I completely agree. And I would like it to be a month earlier so it's not so cold here in Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, that is. Oh, if it would have been today, it would have been beautiful. Yeah, I know. They hit you with daylight savings time too, so it's always tough. Yeah. All right, yeah. Kevin. Well, um, thanks again for um, coming by, and of course, um, please send our thanks to everyone at Digikey who made the Ada Box 16 possible. That's right. Yes, and thank you, and everybody looks forward to Ada Box 17. Yeah. Yes, it's a secret, but there's still time to sign up for it. We only we have the less. We have the least amount of openings that we've ever had, so everyone should sign up if they're going to get one. Make sure and sign up early. Okay. Thanks, Evan. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. All See right. Next, next uh, special guest tonight, Christina, Christina from DIY Girls. Hello, Christina. Hey. What's Hello. up, you? And what are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here to be able to share a little bit about what DIY Girls is up to right now um, with us going virtual. So I guess one of the biggest things we had to really consider is like what types of projects we could still provide for our girls during this time. So I actually have a bunch of stuff here. I actually just made this. I just finished one of our sessions with our girls. Okay. Um, so we taught them how to build a parallel circuit on a mask that we bought at Oriental Trading. So it was very affordable. We always try to make sure we provide all of the girls with the materials that they need um, because they sometimes otherwise wouldn't be able to just have them at home or be able to have their parents purchase it for them. So the girls had a really fun time making their own mask and designing it. So we did this one today. And then we also um, had an idea from one of our friends over at Brown Dog Gadgets. Uh, they also are makers and creators. So they have a little, uh, bot buddy that they created. So we just made some updates, creating some more um, skins for our girls. So since we're all about girl power, we gave the girls options of like Powerpuff Girls or little um, creatures that they could um, pick from. And then we also updated the switches a little bit. So this one actually vibrates. And then we have, if I turn it on, you can't see it, but yeah. <laughs> it's a little girl. And then I we updated the switches so that they were a little bit easier for the girls to manage. Oh, that's a cute switch. Yeah, so it's just two um, paper fasteners and a paper clip. And then when you hook it, it really has a strong connection. 
And then there's a vibrating motor also included. So then the girls can also make sure that it moves around and it vibrates on the table. So it's really cute. And it's nice to see them kind of put their own characters on. I know that the Brown Dog Gadgets um, friends, that they have some skins for Star Wars. So we just wanted to give the girls options of what they could make. Um, and so far, we started our, our virtual fall programs three weeks ago, and they've been going great. So we're just excited to be able to be here. And we have a fundraiser coming up in a week. Um, so we're very grateful that um, Adafruit donated a gift card for us to be able to raffle off in a silent auction. Um, and I'm happy to be here just to share some of the things that our girls have been working on. Yeah, I love conductive stuff. Like I love that it's like office supplies are conductive and you can turn them into electronics and then you just need a little bit of conductive tape or tin foil and like a coin battery. It's, I, I think that's like, it's like trash tronics and I love it, you know? Yeah, we always want to give them options, right? Like yeah. things that you can think of and build from home and enhance. So I think that you're right. It just gives them that much more flexibility to be able to make. Yeah, and then they see the world around them as materials, you know? Exactly. Not yeah. just a paper clip, it's a switch. And if folks want to learn more, they can go to DIYgirls.org and yes. information if they want to support the organization and just find out more about it. Yes, please, please, DIYgirls.org. And you can find out more information about our uh, fundraiser that we're having next week. And then also if you'd like to contribute to our campaign. Thank you so much. All right, Thank Christina. You, Christina. Well, um, come back and show more of the projects and um, keep letting us know uh, what other support and help you need will help get the word out. Awesome. We definitely will. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks, Regina. Bye. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, Noam Pedro. What you got going on this week? Hey, guys. Hey, folks. Yeah, so this is uh, going to be this week's project. It's a little 3D printed house. Okay. Inside of it, we have uh, the feather wing doubler with a feather and an airlift. And basically, it's Brent's IoT air quality sensor project uh, with a little bit of extra stuff. Um, so um, it's a small. It's a little tiny house. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have this little weatherproof case that I put together. You can remove the top oh. there. That's where the feather and the airlift are. On the bottom, that's where we have the um, the air quality sensor. Uh, this one is the what? The PMSA 003i. But we yeah. also made it modular so that we can use the other one, the PMS 5003. Uh, and then we have what my favorite part is, is the Stemma. It's easy to plug and play. These are little thumb screws just to make it yeah. um, easy to take out. We could do snap fits, but I kind of like the um, the mechanical uh, uh, stuff with. Um, I'll grab that later. <laughs> if you <laughs> use them feet, you can use our magnetic feet, and Ooh, then that's a good idea. You can add magnet stuff to the bottom. Yeah, so it, we can have different uh, bottoms. So if we want to use a different air quality sensor, we can. And what's cool is uh, the breakout has the stem ports on it, so that we can. Daisy chain different sensors together. So this is the BME 680, and it's just uh, connected over four four wires uh, to the doubler over there. And then we're using um, this guy here, which is like a, a cable gland uh, to make it waterproof. Mm. Uh, so you can chain it at the bottom, add different things to it. There's plenty of room in there for a battery if you want to put a battery in there. Um, and then we have these standoffs here in the back there to kind of give it some elevation. And the plate, I have different plates. I kind of thought it'd be cool to have, of course, like the two screw plate, but I also wanted to do a tripod plate which is nice. You can put a tripod screw in there and add it to whatever. Um, so that will be this week's project, hoping for a Friday release or sooner. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, and actually, we actually had a fire happen. Um, uh, it's a controlled fire. We have like um, development construct yeah, development yeah. homes are being developed uh, over there. And uh, there was a fire going on. And I can see when, like, when the peak fire was. It's a little hard to see in this because like, I was playing yeah. it. But it was uh, the the highest peak was like at seven uh, p.m., mm -hmm. which is like okay, cool. So now we can see exactly when we had our fire. Okay. And then at the same <laughs> time, we're having the whole house painted. We could see, oh, it's not that bad outside. So nice little indicator of being able to tell, you know, what time they started and yeah. you know, see the little visualization yeah. of all that. It's super cool. You get, your nose gets used to whatever the smells. Yeah, that, like, it it's real fast. Yeah, we stuck it in the 3D printing room too to see if the we have a bunch of the um the the germ guards that you got, Phil, for the yeah. office. We have a bunch of those in like all over the house, you know, just to make sure. And it we can see that it's definitely working. Yeah. <laughs> and that'll right. be this week's project. Yeah. All right, well Thank thanks you. so much. We'll be playing um some speed ups and more. We're back onto our regular schedules, so we'll have your 3D videos Yay. Um, tonight. And then everyone, don't forget 3D hangouts yes. every Wednesday at eleven a.m. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks. All right, bye-bye. All right, JP, what do you got going on? 
Hey guys, uh, what I have going on is I have been playing around with some tricolor e-ink and I'll, I'll put this in front of that, that uh, bigger camera view so people can see it. Um, all I did was I went and uh, went through Phil B's excellent guide on preparing images for e-ink displays. So this is an e-ink display hooked up to a feather, this is a feather wing, uh, and it just has three colors. It can only display that sort of uh, papery white, black, or red. Those are the three pigments that are, that are built into there. Um, but using some uh, indexing and dithering techniques, we can get really nice shading, really nice gradation. So this is a image from the movie Ponyo, and this always makes me hungry for ramen when I see this movie. And oh, movies you know, always have such great food in them. Oh my gosh, Miyazaki food is the best. It's like, again, like, oh, uh, and I, I thought this would be a really neat image to try um, these techniques on because there's that steam coming up from the bowls of mm. steaming hot ramen. Uh, and in the original, it's really just a, a slight desaturation of the original image. So it's really subtle, um, but I think it captured it really nicely. And so uh, I wanted to sort of show some of these techniques. So I'm going to do on my workshop show tomorrow uh, some sort of tutorials and guided stuff and go through some different examples of how you can prepare images for these types of displays and use different techniques inside of um, either Photoshop or GIMP if you want to use that or some other free uh, image editing software that can do this sort of stuff or Image Magic, which is free in command line. So um, preparing stuff so that I can dream about ramen. Yum. All right, well, thank, thank you, you so much, JP. And uh, Tuesday, you have your show, JP's Part of Pick, and then tomorrow at four, you have JP's workshop. That's right, come on by. All right. We'll All right thank you, JP. You tomorrow. Keep it dithered. All right, next up, let's go to Liz. Hello, Liz, what you got I'm going Blinka. on this week? Hey, how are you? Yeah. Um, so uh, the color's a little dim because it's on my floor right now, but this is two 32 by 64 matrices. Yeah. And I ported my Blinka Jump game code to run on it. Um, so I've got this big button. Um, we can start the game. Nope. Oh, jump. Jump. <laughs> Okay, jump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 whoa, you're really good at this game. I've spent too much time on it. <laughs> uh, and then to move along, I'll I'll die here. But yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, kind of figuring out how to get the x and y axes. Because um, you have to do it like 128 by 32. So it's technically one long line, but you uh, arrange it. So then things are at different places so it was a little bit of a, a brain uh, yeah yeah there. you could like reverse <laughs> and flip it yeah reverse it yeah um so that was that was fun uh and a good stress relief in a stressful way <laughs> okay. exactly all right liz well thank, thank you, you so, so much and uh congrats on making that game on the the bigger screen Thank you. Yeah. And it is using a matrix portal, should I mention. That's cool. Yeah. You know, people have asked, like, how do I make a bigger display? And I'm like, well, technically you can do it, but you got to do some math. Yeah. It, I I found writing a little diagram helped me. I to, always to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Sweet. All right. All right. Thanks, Liz. Right on. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Okay. Next up, we're going to go to Jeff. Also known as Jeffler. Hello, Jeff. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. So, um, you know, I watch the Adafoot, Adafruit, Adafruit, <laughs> Adafruit, 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 Adafruit. and yes. I look at your lovely testers and I think, I need my own tester. Yes. So yes. I put together this little 3D printed guy. The toggle comes from the store and so do the little uh, pogo pins, which you can just kind of see yeah. in here. And you can take any feather wing and... Uh, it gets hung up on the on the screws when I try to pull it up. Any, mm. any advice out there? Should I just shorten the uh, um, a little bit? You, you sand them down a little bit. Fill them down. Yeah, I think I think like even half that height would be great. But anyway, you just stick the board on and toggle it down, and then all of the electrical connections are made. Yeah. So I've got a three D model that I will share on the Discord. Uh, but I think this will become a guide someday as well. George says, "Love testers. Who doesn't?" <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I haven't actually used it in anger yet, but you know, a lot of uh, feather wing boards come in front of me and and get on my desk, so I think it'll be very convenient. Yes. Yeah, we wanted to have all the things that we use to test 
for other people to then also learn how to build their testers because it's just as important as the electronics we build is if you're going to teach people to do electronics, who does the te who tests the testers? So. Yeah, like uh, if you are imagining making some kind of product, you're going to need something this. like this. And I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I've seen them laser cut um, is another great way to do it. But I go to the 3D printer as my way of making objects. Um, and yeah, it works. So. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Mini fruit. All right, let's go to uh, Sophie, who was mentioned um already so uh hi dan selfie yeah i think digitally had mentioned happy halloween hello happy oh, halloween oh my gosh yeah um it's so good to see you guys it's yeah so yeah, yeah I, oh um yeah i've just been trying to work through all of this the my stash of stuff that i have this whole year i've just been trying to not buy too much new stuff so um, when Halloween was around the corner, I was like, now is the time to finally dig into my Ada box from last Halloween, which I've just been waiting for a good idea to use the monster mask. So that's what I did this year. I made this witch so cool. hat. And um, I actually had this idea a while ago, but I just never got around to it. I was like, this is the time. Um, and I just was totally inspired by Phil these beautiful eye animations um, and I really just wanted to make something worthy of like housing those beautiful <laughs> eyes so yeah so I decided to make this witch hat and I kind of wanted to make it a character on its own yeah. so it looks like it teaches so you to, like teach you know you're like a young witch and the hat's like I'm an old hat and I know exactly all the that's totally what I was thinking. Like, this yeah, yeah, like comes across in the eyes. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want. I just basically made these really deep eye sockets for the monster mask to go in. So um, I did snap it apart, and I, I, I had to save the little nose. You yes. know, it's just so cute. So I don't know. Maybe I'll make it a little necklace or something. Um, and yeah, all I did was break the, uh, the monster mask apart, spread the eyes out a little bit so they were kind of proportional to the hat. And then, um, and then I added an extender to the, the, um, to the JST battery port mm -hmm. so I could break out a power switch. So I added a little power switch to the extender. And now I have a little um, SPDT switch in here, yeah. um, hidden in here. That's just flat, um, tiny little one. It's not, I don't know. I had this in my stash. I don't know actually where I got it, but it's, oh, it's a little like a flat. lily pad. Yeah, it's like a little pad one. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. It's just a nice flat one that I could just kind of stick on there, and then I could hide my battery in the back here behind all these flowers and this ribbon. So. Yeah, now um, I'm going to probably leave her on this little hat stand and she's just going to watch me in my studio. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, the the expressiveness of the folds and the fabric. You know, it really, it really creates the character. Oh, yeah, that's kind of, I wanted it to feel like these eyes were like growing out of it. So yeah. I intentionally wanted to make it out of the same material that I made the hat out of. So it's all this fabric, yeah. like the same fabric for everything. All right. All right, well, excellent uh, project. And uh, thanks for coming by and sharing it. I'm looking forward to all your um, uh, new new projects with stuff that you've been storing. So you give me yeah. that very, this is a very like Kiki delivery service hat, right? Like, you, yes. Super cute. Totally inspired by Kiki's delivery service. And yeah, I, I first step in going through and using up all my stash was organizing the stash, which really did take me probably mm. the first half of the year. So now I get to go in and dig through it all and turn it into stuff. Awesome. Right all right. Okay, we'll, so we'll see you maybe next week. Yep, sounds Indiana. good. I can't wait till next box. Now you're, you, you can catch it for the next box afterwards. Yeah. I just got my box. I'm excited to dig into it. Cool. All right. All right. See you in three see months or early. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right. Let's go to Tim. Hello, Tim. Hey, How are you doing? Tim. What you got going on, Tim? Well, we can't hear you. Let me add. Let me add the other one. Let's see. How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so this week you may have seen in the in the newsletter that uh, Pi Game 2.0 was released. So I felt inspired to play with Pi Game over the weekend, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm always inspired to play with Circuit Python. 
Um, so what I did is I created this library that lets you output uh, Blinka display IO onto a Pygame display. So we can run a simple test here, of course. We can get uh, you know the basic colors with purple and green in Hello World. Uh, but we can also do some more interesting stuff. So we can run the shapes. Um, so we can see some bigger shapes from the shapes library. We can have a bigger screen there. We can move everything around. Uh, we can get some interaction. So we can run the button demo here. And uh, we can use the display button library. And we can click on it. We get the interaction. Cool. So we can have selected. We can change the background color uh, when that gets clicked. Uh, let's see, and then uh, we gonna love this because she worked so hard on the Blinka display AO. Yeah, for real. So yeah, I have to give a huge shout out to Melissa. I definitely would not have been able to do this without uh, the the great work that um, she's put forth. So yeah, definitely huge huge thanks there. Um, let's see. I actually I was surprised actually we get pretty good performance. So the the spark line example from the shapes we can run that and actually hums right along. Um, yeah. That one's pretty cool. And then uh, to save the, the sort of best for last year, I'll run this one. We can have, uh, oops, let's see here. There it is. Oh, yeah, uh, so no, we no. can have the mega party parrot there. Oh, going. Yeah, no. she's, I don't think she's here, but she'll watch she's this. Watching. She'll watch this on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's I got the, the libraries published. It's in the community bundle now. Um, so anybody can play with that if they want. Definitely interested in feedback if anybody gives it a try. Sweet. Um, but yeah, that's what, right. that's what I got. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you for yeah. um, all of your poor quest reviews and tests and bug reports. I see you come up and you're always so helpful uh, yes. helping us find all these bugs and squish them. It's it's a journey and we're all on it, but we're we're going to like do some really awesome stuff in the next few months. So thanks yes. for helping out. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right on. Okay, we still have time for everybody. If everybody keeps it to a couple minutes each, we're going to go to Daniel, then Lolly, and then Mark. Daniel? Take it away. Hey, thanks guys for having me on. Uh, I teach uh, Python to middle schoolers and I've been doing this now for about five years and we always use Circuit Playground. Um, and every year uh, I try to have a theme. So last year's theme was Star Wars and this year's theme is Lord of the Rings. Ooh. But I never got on last year to show any of the projects so I thought I'd bring in one that we did last year. And this is a uh, Star Wars Holocron uh, that the kids mm -hmm. made. Um, using a real simple uh, circuit playground, and if you just you know turn it, turns on. Hopefully you can see that, and it yeah. just sort of glows. Wow, looks great. You know, and they turn it, and they can change colors. Uh, that was red and green. Uh, it's probably washed out there. No, I see it. Yeah. And then if you turn it this way, it will change the uh, the blink rate of the holocron, and so you can you know do a slower and slower mm -hmm. blink rate, um, or you can just have it stay on permanently. You know, you can change the colors. Um, so that was kind of a, a fun little product for the kids and it really it helps them learn about not only the circuit playground, but, you know, even real simple, you know, accelerometer, um, information can be used to make kind of fun little projects. So the kids had a real fun time with that. So, yeah. yeah. So and, uh, maybe I'll come on next time and show some Lord of the Rings stuff that we're making. Awesome. Yes, Absolutely. please, please. Good themes. And, uh, you know, the Mandalorian and all the uh, Marvel movies, you have an endless series of themes. So yeah, they'll never, really yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love the, the, the combination of learning to code and hardware because I feel like coding is so abstract that then when you physically see it, like an LED light or change color, you're like, oh, I understand hex codes or I understand yeah. while loops or yeah. I understand delays. Like it kind of comes together more because you're physically seeing it. Yeah, yeah. For middle schoolers, that really helps to have that physical touch. They can actually touch it and see it rather than the abstract, you know, I, I watched the loop do something, they can actually see the colors change. That's really, really big for them. Yay. Yeah, you, you can read about hula hoops, but eventually you gotta try it. That's right. right. All right, thank, All right. You, thank you, Daniel, and thanks for teaching Next Generation yeah. of Coders. All right, next up is Lolly. Hey, Lolly. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm here talking about uh, this crowd supply campaign that I've been working on. I was actually on the show about a month ago uh, showing off this Azul board. It's based on the NRF 52840 Express. Uh, so this supports CircuitPython, uh, got it OSHA certified. Uh, so I've been trying to put some projects around it and uh, that's what I'm gonna show today. Uh, so I was kind of inspired by my two little daughters to build uh, more STEM material for young girls. and. Um, Kind of like what Christina was talking about earlier, somebody who showed off the project. I, I just want to get kids learning coding and uh, hardware in general. Uh, so anyway, uh, with that said, I'm just going to quickly pan the camera to the two projects that I have as part of the crowd supply campaign. Hopefully this works. Can you guys still see mine? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. 
All right, so two projects here that's part of the campaign. The first one is a little robot kit. The second one is an FM radio kit. Uh, so the robot kit, uh, it, this thing will all come apart and it'll come in this little uh, plastic ball, uh, the whole kit. Uh, I was kind of inspired, I was in Japan last year, I was inspired by Gashapon and there are so many Gasha uh, machines everywhere. So I was like, it'd be cool to put like electronic kits in these little balls. So that's the idea behind that. Uh, but anyway, the kit actually has, so the Azul board that I showed earlier, uh, Bluetooth control, uh, it has a DRV8833 for the motor control, so two N20 DC motors. And it also has a little buzzer on it and also uh, four uh, NeoPixels, these uh, angular NeoPixels that you see on the side here. Uh, so just real quick, I have it paired it to, uh, paired to the Adafruit uh, Bluefruit uh, app, and uh, you can actually, you know, drive it. That's, that's yeah, fun. It. And you can also program the NeoPixel. So this thing runs Circuit Python. Uh, I'll be the Crowd Supply campaign talk, talks about Circuit Python and the Feather Form Factor. And the idea here is again just to be modular. That's the idea. So it'll be using the same uh, brain board, but have different expansion modules at the bottom. Uh, the second kit, real quick, uh, is an FM radio kit. I've looked around. I didn't really see a lot of MicroPython or CircuitPython FM radio kits around. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to build one. So this one actually uses the RDA 5807 uh, FM module. This thing, this thing is pretty powerful. It has uh, RDS uh, synthesizers, a uh, you know, bass control, a bunch of different things built in. So I actually got a uh, CircuitPython library uh, written for this. So I'll be submitting submitting a pull request for that. Uh, so that it, it's uh, it's going to be supported in time uh, for this uh, when, when I do uh, start shipping these to the crowd supply backers. Uh, so just as a demo, I have I have a little uh, radio uh, FM transmitter here just for YouTube reasons. I don't want you guys to get demonetized or anything for your videos. Uh, so this is actually just uh, transmitting uh, at 89.1 uh, FM. And you can see here uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it's receiving. And uh, you can also do Bluetooth control on this as well. Uh, so you basically just uh, connect it the same way as you would just through your Bluefruit app. And you can control the volume up, volume down. Sorry, I have a speaker here that I connected to. And uh, you can mute and stuff like that. So. Yay! All right, congratulations on your launch. All right, come, come by with more projects as you yeah. get them done. Uh, tonight we'll be playing um, the video from the Crowd Supply okay. campaign on Ask an Engineer. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, right. guys. Thank you, Lolly. Okay. All right, we're going to get to Mark and then uh, Roberto, if you can get it to one minute apiece. One minute each, if you could speed around exactly it. Exactly one minute. Right. Yeah. Go go ahead. I am just showing off the start of a new project, which, of course, my camera is. There we go. Uh, so I've seen everyone do synthesizers and everything, and I've spent years playing the piano and lessons doing it. So I decided it was time to get into MIDI. Uh, so I have bought a lot of diodes to start making my own MIDI keyboard, which to this point should, and I hope the mic picks this up. Yay. All right. So You're it's just the there. start of it. Next yeah, is to actually hook it up to a uh, keyboard so I can actually play it. Okay. All right. Keep well, right coming on, back. Mark. Yeah, come back and I uh, can't wait to see your progress and as you eventually just play the Blade Runner I love theme it. songs. <laughs> I love Sounds you. Great. I see your projects progress. All right. Roberta, you okay. got one minute. Take it hey, away. Can you hear me well? Hi. Yep, yeah. you got one minute. Okay, Take it away. There's going to be a speed round of some project updates. This birdhouse uh, used to be, a, I don't want to call it dumb, but it wasn't internet connected. Now, uh, my and it's for my pops that's out here in uh, Bandera, Texas. But now he has internet, and I'm working on getting it to post the sensor values to Adafruit IO. Uh, another quick one is that um, it's solar powered. And I'm, I, I picked up a skill and that my dad taught me how to use an angle grinder and like made this from scratch pretty much. And and while I'm out here uh, in Bandera, that where my storage is at, I found my, uh, y'all may remember these or not, they're the one bare toes that are made of flexible uh, shoes. Yeah. And also in storage, I found uh, an RGB matrix that's gonna help me work with uh, my next project using uh, the matrix portal. Cool, you're set, right. good Thank find. You, all right, right on. Well, that's good, awesome. Good to see you, and uh, keep coming back to the show and tell. Glad to see you're uh, doing good. I was thinking about you the other day. Uh, I was like, well, where, where's Roberta? I haven't seen him on the show until recently. So thanks I for coming by. All the time. Come yeah. by next week. All Come right. by earlier. We can get to you. Good to see you. All right, thank you, everyone. And thank you, everybody. We'll finish you right on time. Yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Show until some 30 p.m. Thanks for making this the best half an hour for sure of today. 
Um, better than... Uh, Think of how distracted you were <laughs> watching this. Yeah, thanks for getting us to over 270. No, um, thanks for uh, watching tonight. We'll see you on Ask an Engineer in just a couple minutes. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.